Stephanie here, Ms. Oso oh Crafty. Today is the 28th of November, 2017, and welcome to my 43rd Floss Tube video. Welcome back, or hello if you're new. So today I have some whips to show. I have one finish, and I have Christmas stash that I want to share. And then I'm also going to film a short clip to show you my Thanksgiving decor. Thanksgiving was just last weekend. I hope that everyone who celebrated had a wonderful time. We sure did. I think this year I enjoyed the uh, turkey more than I ever have. I did something different this year. I tried a dry brine and then I, instead of using a roasting pan, I followed the advice of uh, Serious Eats and I used a baking stone. It's kind of complicated, but uh, <laughs> it worked really well. <laughs> All right, so let's get into the, uh, the stitching. So, oh, there's one other thing I want to tell you. I have an Instagram account now. I'm at Ms. Oso Crafty on IG. I will put the handle up here. And I, I forgot to mention it last time. I started it about a month ago, so yeah, I, it's kind of fun. I mean, I update it more frequently than floss tube, more frequently than my blog. So I basically just take a picture when I'm done with my rotation on something, or if I'm moving the scroll or whatever. So yeah, it's cool. All right, so let's get into whips. Right after the last video, I was going to work on Fall Fairy. And this is a Dimensions Gold kit stitched on 16 count, 8 of cloth. I will insert a pic of my previous progress and what it's supposed to look like. Here is my current progress. So what I did is I finished page one, which was over here. Which the only part that was undone was her face. So I did that because I wanted a um, page finish for my Stitch From Sash credit. <laughs> and then I decided I would better do some backstitching because this pattern has a ton of backstitching. I backstitch for hours, like all these little leaves over here and over here, branches and stuff. And I did her sleeve right there. But um, I barely made a dent in the backstitching. So. <laughs> Yeah, well, at least I got it started. And then I decided to start the next page down here with the threads I had parked. So as you can see, I just started working the, the tree trunk down and the, the sky and we're getting into ground down there. So that's what the, that dark gray is. Yeah, so that was fun. Uh, I, gave, I gave her two days. I don't think I'll be working on her anymore this year because well, it's almost December and I'm over fall. Bring on winter. <laughs> but she will be a finish goal next year. And I will work on her year round to achieve that goal with the help of the, uh, or company rather, of the uh, Full Coverage Fanatics group by NP on Facebook. So that would be fun. And then let's see, after I'm looking at my little bullet journal here. So after that, I worked on Made in the Unicorn for a few days. This pattern is by Vermilion Stitchery. I will insert a pic of what it's supposed to look like and a pic of what it looked like before. Here she is. So what I did is I, gosh, I don't remember what I, I think in the two days I had her, what I did was I stitched, I think I stitched her hair and her headpiece and then this little, the little gold thing on top of her headpiece. There's going to be like a blue feathery plume coming out of there, which I didn't get around to stitching. And then my um, gold high luster blending filament came in the mail, so I started filling in some of the gold with the blending filament. You can see it in the flag a little bit. See that sparkle in the flagpole a little bit. 
So there's actually four different colors of gold that are blended with that blending filament. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, not bad progress for a few days. I what I need to do. I think next time what I'll do is I'm going to backstitch the, uh, the rest of this up here, this border, and then I'll be done with the border. I can clean up all these parked threads up there. And I'm going to work more with the... Um, Metallics. It'll just spell out. Oops. <laughs> Try to finish up the metallics. So there's more to do in the flag, obviously. And then there's a little bit in the harness of the unicorn, a little bit on her belt over there, a little bit in the mirror. I need to finish up the mirror, clean up all those parked threads. There's a little bit more backstitching to go in her dress, this kind of like brocade pattern. And that goes on her sleeve as well. And of course, I'll have to backstitch her face and her hair and all that. I need to finish stitching her face. She's missing her cheeks and her mouth and her eyes. <laughs> but, uh, this piece will be a focus next month, December, and I will try to finish it. I want to finish it. Compeller High Water. <laughs> this piece, I started it back in 2007. I mean, I only resurrected it from the whip pile, from the UFO pile, like last year. So, honestly, I think this thing might be more challenging than like the uh, Teresa Wensler Castle project. <laughs> but that's my fault for choosing the wrong fabric. If I'd done this on 28 count, it wouldn't be so bad. This is 36 count, and it's not the nicest 36 count either. But uh, it's a beautiful piece, and I'll be very excited about it to have it finished. <laughs> okay, so that was two days. I actually thought I was going to work on her more, like, later in the month, but I didn't have a chance because Thanksgiving and everything, so what I, I may do is I may work on her, like, now. <laughs> like, I might put her on the scroll frame this evening and work on her some. I don't know. I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the rest of November. Sorry, I lost too bitchy news. Okay, so after that, it was my stitch along weekend with my friend Christine. And what we're doing is working on the Mill Hill Christmas Village. Well, we're putting together a bunch of uh, houses to make a village, basically. <laughs> so, this is the one I finished. Apothecary. So this is my finish. Isn't it cute? So bright and cheerful. I love wax. Isn't that cute? On the, uh, the little uh, sign there. And I love the festive trees by the door. And the red and white striped pole. Do you know what those red and white stripes are for? Well, the red represents blood or wounds, and the white represents bandages and healing. So it's just right for the apothecary. And there's lots of, there's seven colors of beads in here. There's a fair amount of backstitching. So there's like blue beads in the roof, gold beads on the roof, white beads for snow. Copper colored beads is sort of like a highlight on the edges of the building. Red color beads in the tree pots and the trees. More gold beads as tree ornaments. Green beads on the bench. I love that little bench. I think that's so cute. <laughs> There's gold beads over the door. I think that's like a little bell or something here. And there's, um, what else? <laughs> the little trees are pretty cute. And of course I did the, uh, the border over here. This is done with, um, Krynik, uh, 032, number four braid, a little snowflake pattern that I found on the internet. Yeah. So this took a total of, um, seven days to stitch and bead and all that. So started it in... October, finished it this month in 
November. Tacked an extra day onto my rotation to finish it because I was freak loose. So, and I um, gridded across the uh, piece, so I'm ready to start another couple. And then I'll show you the, the rest of it. There we go. So there's going to be four across. I don't have the uh, the fourth one yet for the first row. And uh, there's going to be three rows total, so four rows of three. This is the strong 28 count. Stormy gray, Jobelin. Really nice fabric. Love it. My plan for next year is to keep keep the pace, you know, one finish per quarter, four buildings total for the year. And kind of see, yeah, see the border and everything, that's the space for the fourth building on the top row. I have stitched the border kind of as I go along because if I don't, I never will. <laughs> I don't really enjoy stitching borders all that much. I mean, I like the way they look and everything, but I just find them pretty boring to stitch. And this one in particular is a thread hog. I feel like I'm constantly having to re-thread my needle and secure my thread and all that. All right, so I'll be putting that aside until next year. And then after that, I decided to bring uh, Titania back out. I actually worked on Titania pretty much most of Thanksgiving week when I had time besides like the cooking and everything. So I did, you know, cook the whole thing from scratch. So it was like eight dishes or something. It took like three hours on Wednesday and then most of the day on Thursday. I started around 10, we ate dinner about six. Of course, that wasn't all active time. I did like, you know, have time to take like a little nap while the turkey was roasting and stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, so here's Titania. I worked on her four days over Thanksgiving week and what I did was I stitched the rest of her upper body, her face and her hair and all that. That was a bear. <laughs> the chart in that section, her hair and her, her hair exactly, it's, it's terrible. It's like forward slash, back slash, forward facing triangle, or back facing triangle, right next to each other. <laughs> and there's probably like 40 colors just used in that small area that you can't really tell. But I muddled through with the aid of a highlighter. And what else did I do? I did a little back stitching on her wings and stuff. So I basically did one thread on each side down from the top with the brown. That was pretty good, I think. And then I did a little bit of back stitching on her face and her arms, just enough that you can kind of make out her chin there. I think she's gonna have such a beautiful face. And it turned out I had a little bit more of this sparkly, this pink chronic thread on my spool. So the pattern calls for three spools, I only had one, but I had a little bit more, so I decided to basically exhaust the, the spool and fill in. So I did a bit more over here and a bit more over here. So you can see this part next to her face and over here next to her hair, that needs to be filled in with the, uh, the pink chronic. And I will be getting more this weekend, December 2nd, at Needlecraft Corner in Baltimore, Maryland. I am going for a Christmas party there. So excited. I have visited the store before, but it was years and years ago, so really looking forward to visiting again and enjoying the Christmas cheer. <laughs> Maybe doing a little stash enhancement, although I am kind of in trouble with my sister's stash. I did some shopping over 
you know, Black Friday, all that stuff. Yeah, I'm in the negative again. <laughs> but, I mean, this is, she's huge, right? So I think I can claim like 35 for her or something. Maybe a bit more just for the pain and suffering of working on this terrible fabric. Isn't it pretty? The opalescent Lugana. It's gorgeous, but I don't like working on it <laughs> at all. I, it's just so easy to like get off a thread and I feel like I've drawn more in Titania than anything. So this fabric is um, 32 count opalescent Lugana by Silk Weaver Vintage in Amatree colorway. It's pretty like light peach color. Now my plan for her is to take her out well, December 1st and work on, well, do some more backstitching probably on the 1st and then the 2nd is the party. I'll get the uh, Krynik. I'll probably come home and finish the Krynik. <laughs> I'm hoping to have a finish that first week in December. I mean, I still have to beat her, of course. But the beating on this isn't too bad, I don't think. <laughs> She was my new year, new start, Mira, so it'll be really nice to have her done. And then after that, it was another Stitchathon weekend. So this, you know, Thanksgiving weekend was a Stitchathon weekend. So I worked on Winnie the Pooh, my full coverage by NCG Textiles, doing this with a kind of DMC conversion on my own fabric, 28 count Monaco. So what I did is over here. I did another two columns from the top down to the midline of the chart. So that was maybe like oh, 1,400 stitches total because I had some of it done before. And it did take me three days. So the missing bit here is where the owl is going to be. It's done over one. So as you can see, we're just kind of getting further into the 100 acre wood. I think from here to the end, it's just more like green tree and stuff. Most of the character detail and stuff is on the bottom half, so. Yeah, this is column 17, I think, that I finished. So I'll do 18 and 19 in December, 20 and 21 in January and then February, my son's birthday month, I will get a page finish because there's like there's 22 columns plus like half a column. I think the stitch count is uh, 224 across. So I will get to the edge of it, get to the far edge <laughs> next February and probably do some back stitch or something. I will definitely fill in this owl thing. Um, so I can claim that page finish for page two. And I may do some back stitching as well. I don't know. I'll figure it out at the time. But yeah, so this piece, it's like, right now I think it's like 15% finished or something. Or, no, that's not right. It's, it's almost, it's like 40% finished, I think. 35, 40% finished. Sorry, I did all these calculations the other day, but I can't remember them. But, uh, yeah, it's coming along. I like to work on it at this pace where I do, like, two columns a month, pretty much. And that takes a couple days, and that's good. I don't want to, like, devote massive amounts of time and my rotation to this. So the Full Coverage Fanatics group that I mentioned a few minutes ago, they have this... Um, challenge going on next year to get like 1200 stitches a month in a project and I will definitely be participating in that challenge either with Pooh or the uh, Fall Fairy. All right that's it for my whiffs so do you want to see my Christmas stash? <laughs> I got this big box at uh, Joanne the other day for like seven bucks. Isn't it cute? The 
category. It's not entirely full of uh, Christmas patterns, so I, I put my felt applique in there as well, and, and that's pretty bulky. I'll just show it to you real quick. So this is the Nordic Ornaments by Busilla. This is Holiday Skate by Busilla. This is Santa Laundry by Busilla. This is Merry Christmas Mail Catcher by Sultana. Jewel's Christmas Mail Bag. This is something I that was actually in my parents' house as I grew up, and I want one of my own, so yeah. <laughs> and then my favorite is this one. The Santa's Vintage Car by Busilla. With the lights and everything. I think this is so awesome. I want to work on some felt applique this year. I might do this one just because it looks like it would be pretty easy to finish and quick. <laughs> At least a couple of the uh, pieces. Um, I do want to do more felt applique like next year, you know? All right, so let's get into the stitching patterns now. <laughs> this is Angelina by Mill Hill. Sorry, the bag is terrible. Yeah, this is part of a trilogy. The other two are these two, Gabrielle and Serafina. I've actually stitched all three of them and finished them as ornies. You'll see them, well, when I show you the ornaments on my tree, which I haven't put up yet because I'm still Thanksgiving stuff up. All right, here's something by Alessandra Adelaide, Tanti di Natal. Really pretty musical piece. I saw this as a model in my LNS in stitches in Alexandria, Virginia, and it was amazing and really big. It's 296 by 110 stitches. So, yeah. <laughs> Here's something that I got is off the uh, stash trade table at the uh, Floss Tube Retreat in Austin, Santa of the Forest by Lavender and Lace. I think that's really nice. Um, I got this. This isn't really Christmas. It's more like just general Christian, but Cookies for Santa by Sue Hillis. I've actually stitch this. I finished it, well I started in Romania and I finished it in like July I think, but I need to fully finish it as a, you know, flat fold. So that's going to be on my to list for December. <laughs> Here is Hands on Design, Christmas Collection Part 2, Glad Tidings, Goodwill to All, Great Joy. I think these are really cute. I stitched, well, two of them from Part 1. Um, this year, earlier, when I was doing ornaments. This is Stony Creek Countdown to Christmas. It calls for a chalkboard button that you can, you know, <laughs> count down the days of. I think that's so cute. And this one calls for, like, blending filament, glisten gloss. The chalkboard button, as I mentioned, plus a couple of holly buttons. I guess those are up here on either side of the countdown. I think that is really cute. And it's 149 by 109, not too big. Here is Christmas Sweets by Sue Hillis. I really like this. The um, treats of Christmas are definitely one of my favorite things. I mean, I love mint and I love chocolate and I love gingerbread. <laughs> All those things. Victorian Snowman. Merry Christmas. This is by Cooler Design Studio. I love that. I think it is absolutely adorable. Vintage postcard style. Yep. Gotta stitch that one day. This is from an old Just Cross Stitch magazine. And it's not terribly big. 
This is designed by Sandy Orton for Stu Cooler Design Studio. It's 150 by 108. Victorian snowman. Cute, cute, cute. I actually know it's just a snowman, but I'll have to do that one of these days. This pattern is by Glendon Place. It's called Santa's North Pole. I love this so much. I even have a piece of fabric in my stash for it. I got, well, anyway, the problem is that I'm stitching the, the Mill Hill Christmas Village, and I just don't think I can do, like, another <laughs> Christmas Village while that one is going on, but... As soon as that one is done, I will be starting this one, I think, because I really love this pattern. And like I said, I did buy a piece of dwarf opalescent cashel for it. Here is The Night Before Christmas by Stony Creek. There's, well, three patterns in here. The plate, the stocking, and the frame piece. I bought it for the frame piece. I love this whole, like... <laughs> cut through house type thing with the little boy coming down. <laughs> that reminds me of my little guy. His hair is very similar to that color. Um, but of course you could easily, you know, change that if you wanted to. And it says Merry Christmas at the top. You see Santa and then there's bedrooms and the living room and oh, it's so cute. I love that. It is a pretty big pattern. It's like, Visit from Santa and the size is not that easy to find. <laughs> well, I can just tell you it's on one, two, three, four, five, six pages. Here we go, 155 by 309. Yeah, that's a big one. <laughs> And I actually have a digital pattern in my stash, which I'll insert a pic here. It's by Tilton, Tilton Crafts, I think, and it's called um, Up on the Rooftop. Okay, here's Cricut Collection Christmas. Merry Christmas. I like that a lot. I don't know about the colors, though. I might have to do a little revising on that or maybe not. I don't know. I'll have to pull the colors and see what they actually look like. Yeah, it calls for DMC. So. Here's something. Keslin's A Red Merry Christmas. I think that is so pretty and classy. I really like it. It's huge. 321 by 293. It was stitched over one on 28 count. I might try 25 count for that. One over one. I think that's so pretty. So elegant. It was stitched with silk too. Anyway, all right, so here is Glendon Place Gingerbread Grove. I think this is the cutest thing in the world. I love this so much. And it's incredibly sparkly. I mean, it would be. So we're talking about um, like 10 spools of Krynic in seven, seven, uh, seven different colors and like 10 different colors of Mill Hill beads, a few with multiple packs. So this thing would like seriously sparkle and shine. <laughs> I love it. The size is 268 by 108. Beautiful, I love all the detail in there, the little gingerbread men and the, the pretzels and the gumdrop path and the lollipops that are planted, and the little reindeer. Oh my gosh, this whole thing is just adorable. Here's something by Vermilion Studio, Glittia, Glittery Snow Santa. Yeah, Vermilion, Donna Vermilion Guillampa. That's really nice, and it's done with all sorts of like blending filament to make the the snow sparkle. I think it's blending filament or something. Or chronic, I don't remember. But yeah, it would definitely be sparkly and glittery. I think that's really pretty. Here's something. Twas the Night by Sue Hillis. This was recently finished by Nell of Little Yellow House Crafts. Hi Nell, if you're watching and 
her piece is just amazing. And I really want to stitch this. I mean, it's words, you know, typography. How fun are those to stitch? <laughs> of course, the border is not words, but, you know, I would deal. I think the border is gorgeous, and I'm sure it's a pain to stitch, but I would, you know, just do it as I go along, which is my normal practice with borders, and it wouldn't be that bad. So I love this poem, too. It was the night before Christmas. Here's another Alessandra Adelaide, Magic Reindeer. Isn't that pretty? It's really big, 212 by 229. What I want to do with this is stitch it like one over one with Petite Treasure Braid on 25 count or something. I think that would be awesome. I think that is beautiful. Beautiful reindeer. Um, I have something that's just a, a chart. I think this is a freebie. Well, I'm not sure though. It's Mirabilia 2010 Holiday Cherub. I'll kind of hold it way back here. Yeah. <laughs> Here's something by Jim Shore, Santa's Workshop. I love that. Look at that. With the Santa and the little elf holding the paint palette and Santa painting the Nutcracker. Oh my gosh. So cute. It calls for those four like buttons that are in the corner. I don't know if I would buy those, maybe. <laughs> I think that is just like the cutest thing ever. I think it would look fantastic stitched on like willow green, maybe. What is he stitched on? Let's see. So this is published by Mill Hill, which means, yeah, lots of beads, probably about 12 different colors in here. And it says it was stitched on time and dyed jubilant. So I guess it is like a, a really light green. I think I would like a slightly darker green. That looks more neutral to me than anything else. And you would have to do, I think it was stitched on the 28 count. So I would have to do it on 28 count so that if I choose to use the buttons, they would, you know, fit in the space allotted. Willow Green 28 Count Linen was actually the first non Ada fabric that I ever used for uh, Celtic Spring. Okay, so this is another Mill Hill. This is, well, a book with a bunch of things. I got it for that big believe on the top there. I love that. That looks pretty shiny. It's probably all done in like beads or chronic or something. And it's stitched on red. I've never stitched on red before. That would be a fun uh, little difference. And what else is in here? There's this little village thing is pretty nice. That, or that little house type thing. That's cute. And this little Noel square. That's nice. There's a lot of nice things in here. Yeah. Who are the designers, I wonder? It doesn't, I don't think it tells you. It's Mill Hill, I guess. All right, um, I got a couple freebies. Mirabilia 20, 2007 Cherub, what about here? And this is the holiday an ice by just Nan, with like horny type things. This is a pattern for a tree skirt, which I've actually stitched. <laughs> it's called um, The Ingredients of Christmas or something like that. Christmas Ingredients Tree Skirt by Dimensions. I've actually stitched this, fully finished it as a tree skirt. I'll show it to you when I show you the ornaments on my tree. Here is a portrait of Santa by Donna Vermillion Giampa. I think that is just lovely. Look at the detail on that. It's so pretty. I love how he's got the um, wreath of holly and all that around him and the, the bells. 
And on the back, you can see it's stitched on a couple different counts. <laughs> Look how big it is on that afghan. Wow. It's probably like 11 count or something. Here is Blend in Place on Shepherd's Watch. This is part of a trio. That's really nice. I want to stitch all three of them. Three Kings and Nativity. So it calls for um, Mystic Cashel. But you need, they won't fit on a regular fat quarter. They're too big. So you need like a third, I think, each. Now one day, maybe next year, I'll buy the fabric from Blend in Place because they do sell like the, the cuts, you know, on their website. Here is Celtic Christmas by Lavender and Lace. I have actually stitched this and I'm hoping to get her frame for this year. Here is Gingerbread Trio by Little House Needleworks, Diane Williams. Ginger, cinnamon, nutmeg. Isn't that cute? I think that's adorable. Little House Needleworks. And this is pretty small, 145 by 84, and it's mostly negative space, so I think that would stitch up really quick. Here's something that would not be so quick. <laughs> this is Oh Holy Night Nativity by Stony Creek. K, uh, K of K's Cross Stitch is stitching this one, and it is absolutely gorgeous. Hi Kay, if you're watching. I actually have a piece of fabric in my stash for this, the fabric that it was stitched on. I think I bought them together. I love that. Here's another Stony Creek. Piece of Christmas. Several patterns in here. Plate, stocking, holidays, happy holidays, Santa, and then the, the skate. I bought it for the skate with the cardinal and all that. It says peace. I think that's so pretty. And I love to ice skate. More pics on the back. There's that little snowman thing. What does it say? Glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace and goodwill towards men. From Luke. And... There's this, this is really old. Pat Olson's Merry Christmas. I've never stitched anything from here that I recall and I may never will. I mean, it's kind of like cutesy for my taste, but maybe one of these days, we'll see. Here's something from Vermilion, Santa's Fireplace, stitched on black. Wow, never stitched on black. <laughs> One of these days, stitch count on this is 188 by 212. So, not too bad, I guess, but yeah, black. <laughs> Santa filling the stocking with the uh, sack of toys at his feet. Love that. Here's something Marty Bell's Rocky Mountain Christmas. I love that. Mildred Hinnant Hedgepath. I think that is so gorgeous. Wow. I would love to go there someday. I think it's in Colorado or something. The place this is based on. Yeah, Maxwell Mansion in Georgetown, Colorado. Top 10 outstanding Victorians in America. Georgetown is known for gold and silver mining in the 1800s. Yeah, so this one, it's a big one. <laughs> 214 by 155. I guess it's not that big, but it is, you know, almost full coverage as you can see. I think that's gorgeous. Christmas Gentleman by Leisure Arts. That is really cute. Santa in different like styles, different cultural Santas, I guess, with the Merry Christmas. I think that's really, really cool. This is by Joan Elliott. Noel Banner on black. Maybe I'll start with this one on black because, you know, it's a relatively simple stitch, just a couple colors. <laughs> and it's not that big either. It's like 71 by 275. So 
Beautiful. Lovely. I think everything by Joan Elliott. <laughs> and last but not least, we've got The Herald Angels by Donna Vermillion Giampa. Hark the Herald Angels sing. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, so I love that song. And I love angels, the bells and everything. I love the blue and the red and the green dresses. I think that's so gorgeous. Ringing the bells. Yeah, one of these days, I'm definitely gonna stitch that one. The chart, oh wow, some of these like fold out charts is massive and it's in color. Hmm, it's 159 by 193. Okay, that's it for my Christmas stash. <laughs> kind of a lot, huh? All right, so let's get into my uh, my plans now. So it's the end of November. I think what I'm gonna probably do is work a little bit on Made in the Unicorn and try to get a um, jump on my Christmas framing projects. <laughs> it would be great if I could get at least one finished before December actually starts. Maybe the uh, 12 Days of Christmas by Joan Elliott, I'll insert a pic. Yeah, so, I am. Uh, and then we'll get into December, so <laughs> I need to take down my how my uh, Thanksgiving decorations and put up my Christmas ones and hey guys I want to make this little clip to show you some of my Thanksgiving decor so this is a bunding I made for the space between my living room and dining room it says thankful from both sides and it's letters applique on three different colors of calico The letters, I think I printed them onto fabric or something, and then I sewed, the, sewed it together with um, some double fold bias tape I made, little loops at the end for hanging. Thankful. The sentiment of the season, right? And then over here, I have my mantle display. This is a Sorry, Oliver's playing with the uh, piano, this little piano. Yeah, so this is a um, wreath that I made with um, pine cones and sheets of sheet uh, music, pages of sheet music that I ripped out of a uh, book, old book, and a glittery ribbon. It's on like a foam core base, I think. It was a while ago that I made it. And then this little guy here is something I made. He's like a little turkey doll, kind of. He's cute. Stowed him together. And uh, stuffed him. His eyes are like little beads. He's got cute little toes. <laughs> I like him a lot. The only problem is that Oliver thinks that he's like a toy and wants to play with him, but he's not. <laughs> and then these letters I made, they're, they say gobble. So they're just little wood blocks that I painted. I drilled holes all the way through and strung them together with an orange leather cord. And then the letters I purchased, the letters are wood as well. And I painted them gold glittery gold and then glued them on there and then I made this little arrangement here in the watering can nice autumnal type thing and then the rest of the stuff was just things I had purchased the leaf garland and glittery pumpkins acorns cornucopia etc this is nice it's a little cinnamon broom that Smells fantastic. <laughs> Gives us a nice cinnamony aroma over here. Okay, that's it. Thanks for watching. Bye. My plans for December are to work on Titania and Finisher and work on the Maiden the Unicorn and Finisher. <laughs> I would also like to work on King Author and get a decent chunk of progress. I'm planning to start uh, a new project, Celtic Winter with a color conversion around the 21st, which is the uh, winter solstice. 
and I also want to work on my charm Santa piece around Christmas, maybe after Christmas. I'm going to try to get like 1,200 stitches or something on him, and uh, yeah, he will show up um, more frequently next year because, you know, he has full coverage and everything, so the uh, full coverage for Nice group, their quarterly winter sale starts, well, the 21st, the winter solstice, so I don't think there's any particular, like, um, you know, stitch number requirement, you know, for the stitch along, but it would be nice to get 1200. So <laughs> that's what I'm going to like shoot for. And, you know, December, busy month, lots of parties and shopping and gifts and wrapping and baking and all that. So <laughs> I will try to come back before Christmas though, and show you my, uh, Christmas decor and also whatever I've managed to stitch up to then. So this is a, a long video, 43 minutes. But let me, um, do you want to see my, my knitting? So I did actually finish my Shakespeare in Love project and it's blocking. It might be dry by now, I don't know. <laughs> um, Last time I checked, it was still a little damp, but I'll try to, uh, I'll wear that next time. As for today, I am wearing a hand knit that I'd like to share. Okay, so this pattern is called Chamboursal, and it's by Ruth Garcia Alcantud. I knitted in Valley Yarn Charlemont, which is like a sock weight, merino, silk, nylon blend. It took about 1,300 yards, and I did it back in 2011. Knit the 34 inch size. So this pattern is, it's knit on US 3s, 4s, and 5s, and you change needle size to accomplish the, the lace shaping. So obviously smaller needles for the, <laughs> the small piece part of the thing, and I, I like it a lot. So the, the hood is kind of funny. Maybe you see if I turn around. The hood is way too big for me. But it, it still works, you know. Oh. <laughs> um, what else? Well, the pattern is pretty simple. It's got like this lace, heart lace thing going on. And it has the split neck, which is really nice. And... The sleeves, I added length to them because I have long arms, but they're still kind of short, you know? <laughs> um, what else? The yarn is really nice, but it, um, it has pilled quite a bit <laughs> through the years. It is very soft, though. I mean, that's kind of the trade-off you get with soft yarns. They pill more, so... Merino is not exactly known for its durability. That's it for me today. Thank you for watching. Thank you so much for sticking around if you have indeed to stuck around to the end. So I will uh, check in in a couple weeks and I'll show you what I've been doing and my Christmas decorations. Ta-ta!